Photoshop will work for Arduino is a small track platform designed around, designed around the popular Arduino USB microcontroller. In this segment, I'll be showing you how to connect the electrical wiring. Before you start, you'll need two, two items. First is a soldering iron, and next is a cutting tool, like a pair of good scissors. Why do you need a soldering iron, you might ask? Well, because the Pololo Serial Dual Motor Controller comes with the pin headers unattached. So what you'll need to do is solder the very tops of the pin headers to the top of the board. Should you decide to solder it to the bottom, you won't actually get to see the LEDs at the very top. Second thing you might want to do is use a pair of scissors to cut off two pins, two individual pins, and solder them to the ends of the 9-volt battery lead. Why? Because the 9-volt battery lead's cables are very, very small and they don't actually stay fixed inside the breadboard. By now you would have chosen your location for the Arduino USB microcontroller. In this case we've chosen it off to the side rather than the center because it leaves room for all three uh, breadboards. What is the difference, you might ask? Well, if you place the Arduino in the center, it could be aesthetically more pleasing, but it only gives you the room for two breadboards. Nevertheless, in both configurations, you have room for as many shields as you wish. We've also fully wired it, which we'll explain to you in a quick second. You might notice that the Lynx Motion Pen Tilt Kit has not been assembled and included in the rover. This is mainly to allow viewers a full shot on the rover itself without anything uh, blocking the view. Before you begin with the wiring, Make sure that there's no 9-volt battery connected and no AA batteries connected so that nothing will be fried in case of bad wiring. Before you proceed, the first thing to do is choose a location for the uh, dual serial motor controller. In this case, we've chosen it towards the front to avoid uh, anything impeding it, such as a pen and tilt kit. However, any location is just as good. Try to make sure that there's enough room to actually place it. Make sure that the uh, first pin is oriented as indicated in the image. Pin number one is at the very bottom left of the board and is connected to the AA battery holder's red wire. Pin number two is connected to the AA battery's black wire but also to the Arduino's ground pin. Pin number three is the logic supply which is used to power the processor on the motor controller. You can connect this either to the 3.3 volt or 5 volt outputs on the Arduino. Pin number four, the serial control input for the dual serial motor controller, can only be connected to the serial output on the Arduino which is pin number one. The reset pin, pin 5, is connected to any of the Arduino's other digital pins. In this case, we've chosen digital pin 2. Pin 6 and 7 are connected to one of the motors. And again, we'll find out which ones uh, are connected in which orientation. Pin number 8 and 9 are also connected to the other uh, motor. Laid out flat, the connection should be done with preformed jumper wires. The wires from the first motor are run through the frame and shortened a little bit and connected to the proper pins on the motor controller. The wires from the second motor are also run through the hole on the far side of the frame and shortened just slightly, again for aesthetics and to clean up the board. Don't shorten the wires too much if you plan to move the motor controller around the board to different breadboards or to a second level, otherwise you'll have to rewire it. Note that we've added an on-off switch between uh, the serial output of the Arduino and the serial input of the motor controller. Again, this is done for a reason because, as you'll find out if you try it the other way, when you download a program to the Arduino, and the motor controller is connected, the motor controller will behave erratically and the motors will go on and off uh, in very random fashion. Again, this is just wise. If you don't want to use the on-off switch, you might have to lift up the Arduino while it's being uh, programmed. If you want to use the sharp infrared sensor, connecting it is actually very straightforward. Use the included hardware and mount it to the front of the frame and just plug in the included wire. It's, easy, it's as easy as that. The servo, connector, the servo cables are connected much in the same way, uh, but they don't actually include the uh, three-pin headers, which you'll, have to, which you'll have to snap off from the included jumpers. The AA battery pack powers the DC motors, the servo motors, and the sharp infrared sensor. Notice we've extended the AA power from one breadboard to another to power the sharp infrared sensor. Uh, notice that if you actually want to insert the pan and tilt system into uh, the slot, you can replace these two wires with the number 22 gauge wire. So, to connect the, uh, the infrared sensor's uh, cabling, you connect the black wire to the ground, the red wire to the AA battery uh, holder, and the yellow wire goes to the analog pin of the Arduino. The servos are connected much in the same way, except the signal wire, which is the yellow wire, connects to one of the digital pins in the Arduino. Should you be using one of the shields, such as the motor shield, the wiring is somewhat different. Notice first that the Robot Shop Rover is designed primarily as a development platform, so the wiring shown in this video is just to connect the basic uh, 
Robot Shop Rover Complete Kit. You can add whatever sensors, whatever electronics you wish, with the breadboards and with additional shields. You can also even add a complete uh, six degree of freedom arm to the front, should you so choose. But again, you might require additional electronics. For more information about additional parts and more information about the rover itself, visit www.robotshop.com, keyword RB-12. Thanks for watching Robot Shop TV. See you next time.